Good evening. Hi, everybody. Hey, welcome to For Better. Welcome to For Better. We're yes. Lauren and Joy Hershey coming to you from Dubuque, Iowa. We're going to talk about marriage and relationships tonight yeah. and, and give you some tips and and uh, some help to help with your relationship. Yes. So we, thanks for joining in with us. Yeah, what? just going to say, we really <clears throat> want to help you. We want you to have healthy relationships. We want your marriages to be strong. So we're here to talk about all those things and hopefully you can receive tonight and get some wisdom from God. So Hi he's guys. the one that helps us, right? Hi there. <laughs> it's really cool. They must be in unity. I saw a little one pop up there and three names come up. So <laughs> hi Mike and Peggy and, and everybody. It's good to have you with us. Good yes. to be here. John, thank you for hooking up with us. And, and Nicole. Nicole, thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks for tuning awesome. in. Awesome. Yeah. Good, good, good. Hey, what is tomorrow? Tomorrow, St. Patrick's Day, hey. you guys. Hey, how many of you have a little bit of Irish in you? He does, for uh, sure. His grandpa immigrated from Ireland yep, as when a teenager. Yep, he was teenager, a boy, as a teenager, so, 16 years old. Yeah, Came so over. his um, <clears throat> line of uh, ancestry doesn't go back very far until you find an immigrant. That's right. I have a little bit of Irish in me, I do believe. I'm a kind of a mix mix, a little bit of yep. everything, but I think I have a little bit of Irish in there. We yep. have some muck, whatever. Oh, that's right. In our family, so I would say <laughs> that we got a little Irish in there too. Randy um, says, I. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey. uh, hey, I, I. It's cool. 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 Hey, you have to admire. Uh, <laughs> Me mater? I don't even know how to say it. <laughs> hey, Michael. Yeah. Glad that you're with us tonight. Thanks for jumping in. We're just talking about tomorrow, St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. So are you guys going to celebrate in any way? Are you? I think um, some of you probably are. Um, well, Nicene is Irish, right? <laughs> no, no, no way. She's Filipino. <laughs> hey, I saw, though, that in Chicago this year, the mayor okayed them to dye the river green again really yeah last oh, year so cool. she didn't let them uh, allow them to do it but this year she allowed them to do it she just asked that they not congregate in big groups to look at the river but they were pretty happy about that being able you know being able to do that it's such a cool yeah. tradition it is a cool they tradition do. and they didn't announce it ahead of time they just sent out the the oh, really? workers with the dye and they started dyeing it oh, so it was kind wow. of a big wow what, what, what? You know, it's being dyed green. So that's kind of cool. His mom's maiden name was Heinz. Heinz. Must be an Irish name. I don't know. Yeah, I know Nicene is not Irish. Yeah, no. <laughs> trying to make a joke there. It wasn't very funny. Uh, yeah, so what do you guys do for St. Patrick's Day? You know, you have to admire St. Patrick. He was kidnapped as a boy and then uh, escaped, got back to England where he, where he was born. And then years later, after becoming a bishop, uh, he went back to Ireland. In a dream, he felt that the people that he had been kidnapped by were calling him back to help, kind of a Macedonian call. Wow. And so he went back and ministered to them as a bishop. And uh, So St. Patrick wasn't Irish. No, he was he English. He was English. He was English. But he went to Ireland. Yes. So he was a missionary. Yes, gave his life, served and uh, brought Christ to the to the people in Ireland. That's so, awesome. That's something tremendous. to celebrate. Yeah, it really is. It really is. And he passed away back in uh, the 400s on March the 17th. There and you so go. that's we celebrate St. Patrick's Day. So Hi, David. with the wearing of the green in our, in honor of Ireland. I'll probably wear green so tomorrow. Probably go too. I like to find, wear green on St. Patrick's some kind of green. Day. Pick a, make some cookies or pick some up and <laughs> frost them green, put some shamrocks on them. And, <laughs> Celebrate yeah. a little bit. It's yeah. a fun holiday. My mother being uh, half Irish then, I guess, uh, by background, always had traditions that she would celebrate around St. Patrick's Day. So it was, <laughs> it was kind of interesting. So some fun things to do. Yeah. Uh, put, put on your shoes, do some Irish jigs. Get your shillelagh. Yep. <laughs> Spread a little <laughs> Barney. <laughs> Oh, yeah, right. but don't drink green beer. Don't drink green beer. You don't need the beer. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. tonight, uh, as we are praying, the Lord seemed to stir my heart with this thought to, to, to come to you guys with and remind you and exhort you to build your house on the Word of God. Yeah. You know, I had a, a friend, we had a good friend who was an apostle to Brazil that the Lord spoke to him and said, go to Brazil, take my word to Brazil and set my people free. 
And he told him that as close as you can build your churches to my word, line things up with my word, I'll bless it. And man, they've ended up, the whole movement was hundreds of churches, hundreds of Bible schools, because God blessed the things in line with his word. And uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, the comments are coming in. Yeah. Kind of, they took a little time to come in, but there now go. they're saying, you know, maybe green eggs and ham as a memorial to Dr. Seuss. <laughs> Guys, He's trying to talk I'm about trying the to word. be serious here. <laughs> His comments are floating ah, in probably after. That's you know, great. A little bit later than you posted them, but it just kind of made me laugh. I'm sorry. <laughs> so building our building our house being all, doers of the word. Yeah, building it on the word of God. Yeah, you know, there's so many uh, philosophies and and uh, models of marriage and yeah. relationships, even and like like. Uh, she said earlier, you know, you, you don't, how do you say that? You don't, you don't go by what you feel? How did you say that? You don't... <laughs> well, you, yeah, uh, because if you're not building by the word of God, what are you building on? Are you just building on how you feel? Yeah. Because how you feel, just because you feel something doesn't mean it's right. And if you always just act out in your life based on the way you feel and you don't mm -hmm. have any other guide in your life, any other standard in your life, you're going to be really disappointed in how things turn out in your life because our feelings are not a good judge of what's right. And so things <laughs> come and go, the the latest trends, you know, I was thinking the other day of how, uh, you know, we're not old, but in my lifetime, I've seen the food pyramid turned upside down. <laughs> right. You know, they flipped that thing. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, humanity's wisdom shifts and changes right. over the years. And so, uh, but by building your relationship and your marriage on God's word, you can have a solid foundation and know that you're going to yes. be blessed. There's promises. Yes. God shows up with his blessing and causes wonderful things to take place in your life. You can have a sure foundation. Yeah. Man, after coming through this pandemic thing where everything seems to be shifting and, and, and real disruption happening, it's good to know that there's a solid foundation, uh, a sure word. Right. Yeah. So right. let's pray. Then I want you to read that verse there, Matthew 7. Okay. Uh, Father, thank you for your truth. Thank you for your word. Yes. And uh, help us to prophesy and speak by your spirit tonight. Help us all to hear your word to all of our lives in Jesus' name. Encourage hearts tonight, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, what did Jesus say in Matthew 7? Okay, these scriptures, I really love these scriptures in Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. It says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on a solid rock, on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse Man. because it is built on bedrock. Wow. So uh, how many of you have had this uh, um, situation happen mm -hmm. or had this experience happen where you were standing on a bank somewhere like a shoreline could, uh, on the sand and the waves came up yeah. and they, when they went back, they pulled the sand out from under out your feet yeah. and all of a sudden you're like, Oh, I thought I was Man. standing on yeah, solid sand, yeah. you know, but in a, and, but the, but the waves and the water quickly wash the yes. sand away from you. And suddenly you don't have a good foundation right. under you. And so if you think about probably all of you've had that situation happen in your life, that experience. So, I mean, if you think about and compare that to how you're building your house basically your relationship, your marriage, yes. and your family with your mm -hmm. kids and everything. If you think about that, you don't want to be building in a place where as soon as the water comes, wah, you're on shape. That's a good you know, your, your foundation is gone. There's nothing holding you up anymore. It's, you're sinking, you're sinking, you're sinking. And the beach can be so smooth. And seems so solid. Seems like you could build something it, there. It does. But boy, in just a moment, like as say, as soon just... as the water comes, it gives way. And so we yeah. don't want that. But contrasting then, according to the scripture, if you dig down and find bedrock yeah. and build your house on that, 
that the waves can come and the winds can come and rains and torrents and it's not going to take your house down. Amen. So no matter what troubles come in life, which troubles come to everybody, yeah. troubles come to everybody. So the storms of life are going to come. Yes. And if your house is just built yeah. on the sand, so that's like, well, if it feels good, I'm going to do it. I don't know. This is my idea. You know, just the world's way of thinking and doing or just your own philosophies and things. Right. I think you have a good scripture about yeah. that. Then you're on shaky ground. Yeah. You know, and you're not going to be... Yep. The possibility of you falling in the times of trial is so much higher yeah. if you're not building your life, your house, your marriage, your relationships on the Word of God. Yeah, you know, the... Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's mo many of us, many of you that are with us tonight are already believers in Jesus Christ. and But some may not be. Some of you aren't. And I just wanted to... Uh, let you know that in all the world there is a sure foundation. There is there a is. way to go that's true and that's solid and it's unchanging yes. and comes with guaranteed blessing. Right. Uh, in Isaiah, uh, God said this, My thoughts are not your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you can imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, and my, so my ways are higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Yeah. He goes on to say this, that the rain and snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seeds for the farmer and bread for the hungry. He says it's the same with his word. And this is for all of us. He said, I send it out and it always produces fruit. Mm -hmm. It will accomplish all I want it to and it will prosper everywhere I send it. So wherever you are tonight, God's word, as, as you let it come into your heart and life, it's going to cause prosperity. It's going to cause your life to get settled and established, get stabilized and Praise solid. God. And it'll bring, it will produce that in your life. He said, you will live in joy and peace. The mountains and hills. We were, want. Yes, the mountains <laughs> and the hills were burst into song. I mean, the crowds around you, your community. And the feet, trees of the field will clap their hands. Where once there were thorns, cypress trees will grow. Where nettles grew, myrtles will sprout up. These events will bring great honor to the Lord's name. They will be an everlasting sign of his power and love. So he said his word coming into our hearts yeah. will produce a great change mm -hmm. in our life. Like, What are some examples of, <laughs> of letting his word so, in your heart? You know, we have opportunity to let the word rule our life and yeah. and help us make decisions about everyday things. And so some of the things that you want to make sure that you're living, you know, in God's word about one of those principles is forgiveness. Yeah. So the world is into grudge holding you know, oh, I can never forgive that person for all that they did to me. That's the world's way of thinking. That's based on how they feel yeah. and what they think. And it's not based on the Word of God. But we know that if we build our lives on the Word of God, that we're going to stand. Well, one of those things that we want to make sure that we're doers of the Word is in the area of forgiveness. Yes. And we know that in marriage and in relationships, yeah. we have lots of opportunity to forgive one another because people aren't perfect. I make mistakes and I need my husband to forgive me. And so I'm thankful that he it does his best to live the Word of God, to do what he knows he's supposed to do and forgive and not just you know hold things over my head and you know, be mad at me forever. So that's one area where um, you need to let the word of God reign in your life. Yeah, and and as you do, it will bring joy and peace, just like he said. Yes. It just your own peace. Sometimes we get so our peace is lost because we're all riled up and <laughs> riled up. Yeah, and, and just talk about the sand and the seashore, just. Yeah, and the waves, man, would just have no peace. 
because our emotions are all stirred. You know, something else, you know, that verse talked about digging deep. You know, that, that takes some effort. Sometimes we just, uh, I have to get alone. We have to get alone and dig deep into, what's the word say about this? Mm -hmm. You know, in order to correct our own attitudes, in order to correct my own attitude, you know, there's some days I just don't like myself very much. <laughs> you know, some moments I'm not my best friend. You may not be your best friend. You know, it's hard yeah. for her to be her, my best friend when I don't even like me. <laughs> You know, well, that's, that's, <laughs> and, and you know, sometimes I remember the story of a, a little boy came into his uh, his his mom carrying the paddle and, and said, I, I'm not doing good right now. I need a spanking. <laughs> you know, sometimes we just need somebody to to we need something to break through to our life and help us. Yeah, our, well, correct, attitudes, our attitudes, our attitudes can really get out of line. Now, I like what you were saying about you use the term digging deep. Hmm. And I like that because that scripture that we read about the rock, yeah. you have to dig, you have to dig yeah. to find the bedrock. Yeah. And you have to go to God's word that you have to dig. It, you can't just think that it's just floating in the air and you're just, yeah. auto, because you're a Christian, you're just automatically going yeah. to do God's Word. You're going to have to open up your Bible, whether mm -hmm. it's an app on your phone or whether it's your actual book, your Bible, mm -hmm. and you're going to have to read it for yourself. That's the place where your attitudes can be adjusted. Or the other side mm -hmm. of that is it's also a point where God can build you up. There you go. Because sometimes yeah. the world, not just sometimes, always, yeah. the world wears us down. Oh, man. It The world does not build us up. It's not on your side. No. <laughs> and we need to be edified. We need to have a spiritual mindset. We need to know who we are in Christ, what God said about us. We need to yeah. know we're loved. If we don't know yeah. we're loved, we get insecure, we get needy, yes. we try to get something out of our spouse yeah. that they can't offer, you know, things like that. We need to know that we're loved, we need to know that we're valuable, we need to know that we're righteous in Christ. We need to know all of those yeah. things and we get that not by thinking it, we get to know that by receiving it yeah. from God's word. Go let somebody talk to you that is for you. Yeah. God's for you. He's for He's us. for you. He's for you. He's for you. <laughs> He's like the song said. You know? Right. He's for you. Yes. And so go let somebody that's for you talk to you. Yeah. And, and help you get your attitude straightened out. Yeah. Then you, you know? can build your house, build your life on the word of God. And it, God continually, again and again, <laughs> talks to us about about building our house on the rock. About about and and He always promises. It comes with a promise every time. In Joshua chapter one, He said, "Keep this book of the law always on your lips, meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful." Man, that's like digging deep. You know, keep it there. But he promises you're going to be successful. You're going to be successful. How do I just, I, can I just? Sure, jump on in. I please. have something on my heart that I feel like yeah. I'm supposed to talk, to say tonight and tell you about. So you're watching us as a couple who's been married for 47 years. Yeah. Okay, we have Hard some, to believe it. Yeah, <laughs> we have some, you know, years under our belt as a married couple. Yeah. But I want you to know something. We are only together and have only made it this long yeah. because of the word of God. That's right. We got married very young, as most of you probably know that are watching us, the names that I've seen scroll up tonight. You probably know that about us. We got married ridiculously young. Yes. And after a couple years, we were questioning, are we going to stay together? Yeah. Things were not going well. We were trying to build our marriage based on nothing really, just nothing. our experience, <laughs> yeah. our feelings. We didn't know what we were doing. We didn't have any guide um, except our experience <clears throat> from our, our parents to build on we and and it's only because 
we got yeah. born again Amen. and we said, we need God's word and we're going to build our lives on God's yeah. word. We're going to be doers of what we hear. Yeah. That's the only reason yeah. we made it past that time in our lives where we almost uh, went our separate ways is because of the word of God. And I think that's why we're so passionate mm -hmm. about this point. Yeah. You, we weren't going to make it. Yeah, we would have never right. made it. We wouldn't have made it. Without God's word. And you guys need to build your house, build your lives according to God's word if you want to make it. You can't build it on yeah. what your parents did yeah. unless they were doers of the word of God. But really, you have to know the word of God for yourself. Yeah, you really You can't do. base it on, you know, some magazine article yeah. about how to have a good marriage. You can't base it on things like yeah. that or just your own feelings. You can't. Yep. You have to base your lives on the word of God if you want him to stand. And we want yeah. your marriages to stand. Yes. We want them to stand the test of time. We want you to be a yeah. testimony of the goodness of God and of this, the strength Amen. of God's word. Amen. It'll work for you. It'll work for you. Yeah. God's on your side. He is for <laughs> you. He is for you. Yeah. You know, the old expression, it's not your father's Oldsmobile. <laughs> well, this is not your, it's not... Uh, Lauren enjoys marriage that you you gotta have to do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But but if you put the word first place, man, it'll hold you up. The yes. storms that come. God's word is man, good for you. It'll keep you. It'll keep you. Yeah. How about Psalm one? Because yeah. God again okay, and again just, reminds us that, that, that when you do this, thank you. I believe that's a prophetic <laughs> word. I really do. So here's what Psalm one says. It's so good. Blessed is the man and woman. Yeah. <laughs> Who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor yeah. stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree yeah. planted by the rivers of Thank water you, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Whatever he does. That's what we want yeah. for you. Amen. That's why we're here That's on right. Facebook tonight. Because That's right. we want that for yeah. your life. <laughs> yeah. So uh, put the word first place. Yes. You know, dig deep. And so here's a couple questions uh, I wanted to leave with you. We wanted to leave with you tonight. What are you doing to dig deep and build your life on the word of God? Yeah. What are you personally doing? You know, you're doing it tonight as you're, as you're tuning in here and you're hearing and you're sowing. What else are you doing? You know, are you, uh, what Bible studies are you going through? What books are you reading? You know, sad to say, people, it, it's kind of a proven fact. Most folks don't read a book after high school. Wow. Well, you, you're not going to make it. You know, leaders are readers uh, <laughs> because they need to keep feeding in and you're a leader. You're a leader. You're listening to this. I can tell. That's why you're listening to this. You want to make a difference. You want to make an impact. Randy's going to LBA. Amen. Yes. You're sowing in sowing the word, in there. studying God's word. That's, That's awesome. Right. That's right. So uh, think about it. What are you doing to continually sow these things about marriage and relationship from the word of God? Yeah, are you reading to, your Bible? Yeah. Are you, you know, you can even go on the internet, go on Google and ask, you know, for scriptures about certain points. Let that be a starting point for you. Uh -huh. But Get the word of God into your life uh, about your situation. Yes. And then uh, also, uh, amen, John. John's going to Rainbow Rama. Bible Training College. Looks amen. like he's reading Great. a book as well by John Maxwell on people. Excellent. People skills. That's really good. Good, good, good. Because you're married to a people. <laughs> <laughs> you have people amen. in your life. <laughs> amen. We're, we're Super in good. the people relationship business. Praise yes, the Lord. Yes. Hi, That's Leslie. Awesome. Hi, Leslie. And uh, here's another question, because I know uh, people tune in that are, their children are, are grown. Some of you are in the place, your children are grown. Some of you are single or single again, maybe widowed, widower. Uh, you're single again. Let me ask you this question. What are you doing to pass the things of the word of God on to the next generation? Mm to your children, to your grandchildren. And sometimes they don't listen. I get that. I know. 
uh, still Deuteronomy 6 says we should put this word in our life, live it, and then put it in our children's hearts. And so sharpen it like a knife and so it yeah, penetrates. So can definitely yeah, you can share from your own experience. Share things with them. Share this Share this broadcast. Yeah, amen. <laughs> yeah, tell them you'll take them out for lunch if they'll sit down and listen with you. However, whatever it takes. So yeah. what are you doing to sow the word of God? Just like I said, to correct your attitude. Man, it takes a fresh time yeah. with him that cares for you and loves yeah. you. He can speak the truth to you in love yeah. and charge your heart. He'll help you get, get right yeah. and keep you right. Praise the Lord. Hey, thanks, guys, for all the fireworks. Thanks for interaction tonight. Thanks for yeah. tuning in and sharing yeah. this. I like uh, did hear from Facebook the other day that after April 16th, watch parties will no longer be a part of Facebook. They're dropping it completely. Oh, I did not know not that. Not just for Christians, but for everybody. So hmm. uh, we've got about a month and a half to do watch parties. And uh, So let's get the word out about yeah, this get the broadcast. Word out. And get the word out to your family and friends about the word, about getting their life on the word of a God, yeah. on the word of the yeah. rock. All right. Hey, we love you guys. Love you we guys. want God's best for you. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in tonight, and we'll see you next Have week. Have a great week. Good night.